Hello and welcome to Cadasta's Data Accelerator Grant Webinar. We're so pleased that you've joined us. But before we get started, we'd like to run through a few housekeeping items. So please check that your audio is working and that you can hear me clearly. Um, please note that there is a question and answer function. So add your questions at any time in that box and you can upvote those questions to move the question up to the top of the list. And also note that we will be asking two questions via our poll function, and we ask that you answer those as they appear. Hello. Okay, I think we lost some audio, but we're back on. Uh, we lost audio maybe a minute ago. Uh, so I'll just repeat what I have said about the um, Data Accelerator Grant. Um, I also cannot hear. Okay, thank you for folks who are um, giving feedback on, on the audio, and I think we have the problem fixed. Um, Going back, though, uh, for folks who maybe have missed it, 
uh, Cadasta's Data Accelerator Grant, which is part of the Land Rights Challenge Fund, um, is essentially designed to help support our partner organizations in completing their data collection activities. Uh, Cadasta, in the last four years, has has um, become aware of and, and through our project experience recognize that data collection efforts oftentimes get stalled. And so this grant facility is actually designed to support completion of those activities. So moving on to eligibility. Uh, first and foremost, um, Eligibility for this grant um, is defined or determined by being a CADASTA partner. Um, and the definition of being a CADASTA partner is that you have a signed MOU or partnership agreement with us. Um, that doesn't mean that new organizations who are interested in this grant opportunity um, can't become partners of CADASTA and then apply for the grant but there is a process to go through and I'll discuss that here in a minute. Actually, I'm gonna... Ah. Uh, other eligibility requirements. You have to demonstrate or have a financial need and this financial need needs to be related to your data collection activity. So the collection of uh, land and other resource information from households or communities um, that are uh, affiliated with those lands and resources. Eligibility also requires that you, um, the grant application be in alignment with the scope of work that is a part of the partnership agreement or MOU. Requests for the grant also must not exceed 10,000 US dollars. And the applications must be completely filled out. So this includes all questions, the entire budget file, including all of the um, required fields, and then all of the required attachments. So as I mentioned before, uh, the last item of eligibility, but maybe the most important for this audience, uh, is that you have to be a current Cadasta partner. And I'm curious now, we're going to launch a poll. How many people are uh, current Cadasta partners? Please use your webinar screen to indicate uh, whether you are a current Cadasta partner, whether you would like to be, or whether you're not currently a Cadasta partner. And I see the responses coming in. We'll publish the results in 10 more seconds. All right, ending the poll in three, two, one. And I'm gonna share the results. So it looks like we have um, a small amount of people who are uh, current partners, um, small, apart, small group of folks who are not current partners, but then the large chunk of you are not current partners, but you'd like to be. And that's really fantastic. Um, I'm glad we asked that question. The next slide will be for all of you folks who are not current partners, but are looking to become part of our um, partnership network. Perfect. Uh, so this is uh, the overview of how to become a Cadasta partner. First of all, um, it requires a preliminary discussion. So the first step is uh, that you express interest. Um, and many of you have done that through the grant application process or by participating in this webinar. But um, request a formal, uh, submit a formal request of a desire to, to work with Cadasta and to um, develop a partnership. And the first step of the process is to host an introductory meeting 
where we can um, go over your organizational needs, the project requirements that you have, uh, your mission, the scope of work, timeline, technological capabilities, and, uh, and other things on your end. And likewise, we will bring to that meeting an overview of Cadasta's tools and our technology platforms. After that meeting, both parties would evaluate the partnership opportunity and they'll make a decision whether to proceed or not. Um, if you know both parties go forward at that point, uh, you move into the assessment phase of uh, becoming a Cadasta partner. And um, during this phase, we provide a full demonstration of our technology tools um, so that you can get an idea of whether the technology is appropriate for your needs um, or not. And we would also review uh, all of our data privacy and data governance um, uh, matters. If at that point, the technology you determine that the technology meets your needs, you would then complete a uh, partner intake form, um, which provides our team at Cadasta with more details about your organization and the specific requirements, um, both technologically and, um, and from an implementation standpoint. Um, and after that phase is complete, again, both parties reevaluate the partnership uh, opportunity and they decide whether or not they want to move forward. Again, assuming that uh, both parties agree to move forward, the last phase of becoming a Cadasta partner is to develop and finalize um, an agreement with us. And so um, we would uh, draft a partnership agreement that is then sent to the potential partner for review. Um, and then we negotiate uh, through comments or changes and any necessary edits that are required you know on both sides once that's finalized the agreement is uh, then signed by both parties and then you can officially become uh, a cadasta partner or you officially meet the definition of of a cadasta partner and it's at that time uh, that you would be newly eligible for the data accelerator grant So moving on to items specifically related to the grant, uh, I want to just cover a few financial matters. Um, as we've stated before in all of our promotional materials, uh, there is a maximum amount of 10,000 US dollars. Um, and I would say that, um, or I would recommend or um, suggest that folks uh, try to um, evaluate their uh, needs and come in at under the $10,000 just because we have a finite amount of resources to dedicate for this grant. And uh, if we have 15 submissions, all of $10,000, um, you know, that potentially exhausts our funds uh, sooner. If we have, you know, smaller, requests 5,000, 1,000, you know, 6,000, we will be able to fund more uh, grant uh, applications. So 10,000 is the maximum, but we do encourage folks to uh, come in underneath that, that ceiling. Allowable costs for the grant include uh, data collection equipment. Does it, so this would be everything from smartphones and tablets um, accuracy antenna uh, for GPS accuracy, data plans for smartphones, etc. But the equipment, as a reminder, must be related to the data collection activities. The other allowable cost is around uh, staffing for data collection activities, and this is uh, this can include uh, wages for enumerators. It can include um, 
wages for, for staff, but only for their time related to data collection activities as it um, pertains to this grant. It may also include uh, travel to the project site if you're traveling far away from your main office or from um, staff homes. Unallowable costs for this grant um, include management costs and any overhead. So we will not accept any budgets that include items uh, that are unallowable. This is um, a good checklist for, um, for uh, potential applicants. Once you've completed all of the required um, questions on the application and in the uh, budget uh, Excel file, it'd be a good um, uh, practice to come to this checklist here or this, this, uh, this screen and make sure that all of your items um, comply with these requirements. So uh, the list of four includes applications must contain a summary of um, what you've done so far, your organizational history related to data collection. Have you begun um, collecting data from uh, communities and from your participants? Uh, but maybe you encounter challenges, or maybe you plan to execute these activities, but you were never able to launch them because of uh, certain funding constraints. Let us know about that. Again, this is a need-based grant opportunity, and so if you can demonstrate that you have prioritized data collection, but for whatever reason you haven't been able to start that or been able to complete that, we want to know about that. Um, that supports your argument for why you have a need for this grant. The second um, item for your application to contain is, again, related to the first item. Tell us what types of um, equipment that you've already purchased for data collection. Um, and also, if you have dedicated uh, staffing resources to this activity as well. Again, we want to know what you've done previously, what your plans are, and how this grant will help facilitate those kinds of um, plans that you have. Third item to make sure you contain in your application is, um, is the description of the requested equipment. So we need to know what type of equipment you're requesting, um, how many of them, and then also why that specific piece of equipment will help you achieve your project goals. Uh, if you feel that you need a $2,000 piece of equipment, let us know why. Uh, I'm not recommending that you do that, but I'm using that as, uh, as an example. If you're asking for something, make sure that you explain why that specific piece of equipment is needed for your project activities. And lastly, uh, please be sure to include uh, in the budget file the cost breakdown for staffing which includes how many staff or consultants or enumerators or data collectors uh, this grant would be covering, what their roles are, what their daily or hourly rates will be, for how many days, and if you are um, requesting uh, as part of the grant any travel or other per diem costs. This is the first uh, sheet in the budget file. Uh, the budget file is uh, able uh, to be downloaded from the um, Cadasta Data Accelerator Grant webpage and also within the actual application form. Uh, the first tab is the list of instructions which are shown here. 
The second tab is the budget tab. And you'll see uh, that there are fields in yellow and uh, shaded in gray. Fields that are in yellow are um, almost always numerical values that you need to uh, input data. The gray fields are ones that are automatically calculated for you. And so if you focus um, in your budget table on the yellow fields, the gray fields will automatically populate based on the values that you put in the cells that are highlighted in yellow. I also wanna call your attention to the uh, subcategories within, or the, the, uh, the rows within each category of this budget table. We do want you to fill out uh, under A, B, C, D, fill out those, um, those rows. So in section one, salary and wage, salary and wages, let us know uh, the title or the role of the, the staff that you're requesting. Likewise, on equipment and on other direct costs, where it says, please specify. Uh, delete, please specify, and enter in the text or the description of uh, the item that you're including in the budget. Uh, this is a short description because on the third tab of the uh, budget file, we are asking for your uh, cost justification. And so, again, you see the same categories of costs on the left side of the screen, but on the right part is the notes section. And we encourage you to give as much detail as you feel is necessary and will support your application in the notes section of this file. Um, if you are requesting uh, as part of your grant, um, you know, a full $10,000 for the staff to collect data from um, the communities that you're working in, tell us, who those staff are, how many, uh, what their hourly rate is, et cetera. Be sure to be uh, as descriptive in the notes section as possible. Um, a one or two sentence description uh, is probably not uh, sufficient enough. So do use this note section to give us the full picture of uh, salaries or equipment that you need. Uh, and then also anything that you are describing, uh, if it is a, um, a, a piece of equipment, technology or otherwise, be sure to obtain quotes for that equipment and include those as attachments to your grant application submission. Um, we need to be able to verify um, that the quotes that you're giving us for your equipment are indeed valid or um, reasonable. So please provide that supplemental um, item with your grant application. Lastly, I wanna point out that at the top of this page and I think at the top of others is a foreign exchange conversion rate uh, cell. If you are obtaining quotes or you uh, pay your staff in a local currency, let us know what conversion you're using um, so that we can uh, verify that and then do a, a, a check to the uh, US dollar equivalency. So on process and timeline, um, this grant fund is open. Uh, we uh, released the application uh, links and uh, opportunities earlier this month, November 4th, and they will, um, it will be open until all the grant funding is awarded. 
I don't know when that will be. Um, so there is uh, an incentive or um, for 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 potential applicants to apply early and when they are eligible. Um, but there is no closed date as of yet. Um, after an organization submits a grant application, um, you'll receive a response within 20 business days from the submission date of your application. This is for existing partners only. Uh, new partners, as we explained at the beginning of the call, do need to go through the, um, the partnership onboarding process first. Um, and as soon as a uh, partnership agreement has been signed, uh, if a grant application has been uh, submitted from an, a new organization, we will only review that application within 20 business days after your partnership agreement has been signed. For, um, for both new and current CADASTA partners, um, We've said you can expect a response within 20 business days as long as there is a current app, uh, partner partner um, agreement partnership agreement in place. Response letters for successful grant applications um, are going to include a uh, a due diligence checklist, uh, which we have linked on our website. We need to conduct some internal. Uh, financial um, uh, due diligence on um, our potential grant awardees. And so that will be part of the successful um, uh, application response letter. And the terms and condition of any grant will be made by amendment to the current partnership agreement. So we'll essentially add an exhibit on to the existing partnership agreement that then updates the terms and conditions of your partnership with Cadasta. Once a grant is awarded, um, the uh, funds are uh, distributed in two installments. The first installment is made on award um, and it is, uh, and the second installment is made only after we can verify that your data collection efforts have been concluded. And we would do that by logging into our technology tools to ensure that data has been captured by, the, by, um, by your staff and representing the target communities that, uh, that you work in. Uh, and one last point on the process and timeline is that um, your data collection activities have to occur within three months of training by Cadasta. And this training could, in, could uh, be in person or virtual. And it, um, it's worth saying that um, any training related to this grant, whether it is virtual or in person, uh, is awarded to data accelerator grantees without any cost. Grant evaluation uh, criteria. So these data accelerator grants, it's, I believe, a, quite a simple um, evaluation process. Uh, it hinges on three different items. Um, and these are in line with CADASTA's uh, three-year strategic plan. Um, the first evaluation criteria is impact. You have to be um, a project or proposing an activity that advances the security of land rights, resource rights, or other uh, tenure security for vulnerable populations. Uh, the second evaluation criteria is financial need. You have to demonstrate that um, you have an acute need um, for funds from Cadasta to support this activity. Um, and specifically, data collection activities that you want to carry out or that you're planning will be delayed or will not occur if you don't receive 
this support um, from Cadasta for equipment and or staffing. And then the last evaluating valuation criteria, and this is maybe the most important, um, is that you have to have realistic budgets and cost explanations for us to understand. Um, as we've said before, this is a need-based opportunity and your financial request needs to make sense to us in order for us to um, favorably um, uh, approve the, the request. And so descriptions of the equipment and staffing that you include need to be realistic, uh, they need to be fully described, and they need to be logical. Um, once we issue a grant, if you're successful in, in your application, um, I'm going to very quickly run through these last two slides before we get to Q&A to go over the grantee responsibilities. So if you are awarded a grant, first and foremost, you have to be, um, you have to use the funds properly. Um, and we will uh, work with you on that. Um, partially by uh, conducting the due diligence, but also by uh, working with you after award to make sure um, that you have the, um, the right uh, financial controls and um, practices in place. You have to be fully responsible for um, implementing the, uh, the project or the grant in accordance with the um, scope of work that we've agreed upon. You have to use funds um, only for the um, activities that you've requested them for. Um, you need to provide timely uh, financial and, um, and program reporting to Cadasta um, as the uh, project activities uh, commence and, um, and are ongoing. You um, must verify possession of any equipment purchased, including the serial numbers, um, on an annual basis through 2021. This is a requirement of uh, our funders, um, the uh, UK Department for International Development and the Omidyar Network. This is a requirement that they ask for from us. And so we, in turn, in using their funds to give to you, need to ask you um, to uh, comply with the same requirements. You have to retain possession of any equipment that is purchased through this grant um, through 2021, and you have to agree to use it in purposes that are in line with your um, organization's mission. We recognize that this is um, equipment that's used for a data collection activity, and that activity will end at some point. Um, but the intent behind this responsibility statement is that um, you are using the equipment um, after this grant activity for um, means or um, uses that um, continue to support uh, securing land rights or resource rights uh, or something else in line with your mission, not for personal use, for example. Uh, you have to provide as a grantee communication materials on your um, project implementation, and this includes uh, photographs, uh, quotations from either data collectors or um, project beneficiaries, videos, success stories, um, other promotional material that you can use and that Cadasta can use um, as a part of its uh, corporate uh, communications. You have to communicate with Cadasta on significant matters uh, relating to the project, any changes in the budget, the timeline, specific activities um, must be communicated um, to your Cadasta point of contact related to this grant. Um, and then lastly, you um, agree as a recipient of the grant to participate in knowledge sharing activities. So it's our intent that um, Grantees are learning not just from us as a grantor, but from other grantees, from one another. And um, as, a, as a successful grantee, you agree to participate 
in any um, activities that we host um, that supports knowledge sharing between um, grantees. So with that, I will open the uh, webinar up for questions. I believe we have maybe about 25 minutes left. Um, and as a reminder, you can ask questions in the Q&A chat box um, on your webinar. And so um, we have uh, three questions so far. The first one is about um, attaching quotes for, um, for equipment. And so uh, the specific question is, where did you say uh, we should attach the quotes? So inside the grant application is a button to um, um, add attachments files. Um, this must include the budget file template, um, but it also will, uh, should include the um, quotes or any supplementary documentation to your budget file. And so that happens right in the application um, in the application form. There's a, a, a link to upload any and all files um, that you deem necessary. So moving on to the next question. Uh, is there a specific type of equipment suggested by Cadasta? Um, we do have a list of equipment that is, um, uh, we have found in our previous experience is um, uh, best use. Uh, and so we can provide uh, those uh, specifications uh, if you request them. Uh, and so, yes, we do have um, some uh, equipment specifications that we have used previously and work well with our technology. I will um, say as, uh, as another, suggestion uh, because um, in our experience we found that uh, tablets actually work better for data collection than smartphones do only because of the larger screen size um, and if you're filling out a, a questionnaire form um, or you're asking your um, community households um, survey questions um, and looking at maps and other things uh, it, we have found that it does help to have a larger screen size. And so uh, tablets uh, are uh, a recommendation that, that we give to partners um, as opposed to smartphones, if that's an option for you. We don't oppose or, or, or not work with smartphones, but we found that many organizations that we've previously worked with um, prefer to use tablets for their data collection activities. Uh, next question, can you explain more about the partnership agreement MOU um, with Cadasta for new partner organizations? Uh, I'm happy to do that and I think what I will do is go back to that screen. Um, we just developed this step-by-step um, uh, -step process on our um, internally and so this now appears on our website you'll be able to um, print this uh, this screen as a as a pdf infographic um, but how to become a cadasta partner it's essentially an um a discussion with us uh, we need to ensure that um you are doing work you are doing work um, that is in line with our organizational mission. And we also want to, uh, we are also using this process or this time for you to see what our technology is and what it is not, and to determine if that meets your need or not. Um, and so uh, the steps are to, you know, first have a preliminary discussion, then go into an assessment phase where you evaluate our technology projects, we evaluate your project requirements and ensure that it's a fit. 
And then assuming that it is, we would go forward with developing and finalizing a partnership agreement. Uh, there's a question, is an or can an organization apply for two separate projects? Uh, very good question. Um, and the answer, unfortunately, is no. Uh, there's uh, a limit. One uh, successful grant application um, per organization. And so um, you can apply. And if you're uh, unsuccessful, you can reapply. Uh, but once you have uh, successfully applied and been awarded a grant, your organization is no longer eligible for any further um, grants under this data accelerator grant. Uh, how can we verify that we have a partnership agreement finalized and already in place? Uh, great question. Uh, from an existing partner. Uh, you, um, we, uh, the grant application requests or, or one of the first questions in the application is do you have uh, an agreement in place with Cadasta, yes or no? Um, we ask you to be honest uh, in answering that question, if you don't yet have one, don't answer uh, yes, say that you don't, but then in the explanation, explain that you're in the process of doing so. Um, but uh, verifying that you do have a, a current partnership agreement, if you're a current partner, reach out to one of your Cadasta uh, contacts and just verify uh, that you do meet the definition of uh, having a partnership agreement or an MOU in place. Um, that can happen very quickly um, uh, with, your, with your current existing uh, Cadasta point of contact. So we have a question about the time period of the grant. Um, there's uh, maybe, maybe the um, person asking this question could clarify if, if I'm unable to respond. Um, uh, exactly to the to to what you were meaning, but I think that there's potentially two things that you that you might be referring to. So first uh, is the uh, grant application period. Um, as I've said before, there is no current closing date for the uh, grant application. Uh, we will close the opportunity when we've exhausted all of the funds, and so right now. We um, don't know when that will be. Um, the second item though about time period that, that might be relevant is, is there a time limit for the grant? Do you have to you know, execute activities by a certain date or um, by a certain time period? Um, and the answer to that is sort of. <laughs> um, the, the only time requirement that we have is that after the provision of training, you have to complete your data collection activities within three months. So after we give a virtual or an in-person training, your project has three months to uh, organize, to go out, collect data under this grant, and then um, for us to verify it. All right, a question. Does the Cadasta technology include software that is accessible by any users? And at the end of the grant life, does Cadasta take back the software? What rights does Cadasta have on data collected? Excellent question. And I assume from a new partner uh, or a, a, a potential new partner. Um, so uh, Cadasta technology um, is, uh, is accessible by any users. Uh, it is available uh, both online and offline. So if you are in a um, an environment that doesn't have good cell cell phone um, uh, coverage or Wi-Fi access, you um, you are still able to um, collect data and upload it to the um, the software. 
um, it is accessible. Uh, you will have access to it after the grant ends. Um, Cadasta doesn't take back your access or the software. Uh, and on the issue of um, uh, rights to data, all um, of Cadasta's partners, uh, they are the owners of their data. Cadasta uh, takes a standpoint that we are not the, uh, the owners, uh, partners, uh, are, or communities more specifically, are the owners of the data. And um, you will have the um, ability to um, determine the access and rights uh, regarding that uh, regarding that data, it's not something that that we do with a heavy hand. We really uh, give that to our partners. Uh, we have a question about when does the training occur um, by Cadasta, and are all data collectors trained? So that's a great question. Um, we will provide um, training usually in a virtual setting um, unless we have um, a, a, a staff member that is um, in your country already. Oftentimes we do training um, uh, by virtual means through a webinar uh, or a series of webinars. Um, so training occurs in, in a virtual environment and it would, um, we would negotiate with you uh, when that occurs. It would be training for project staff. Uh, and so it, it's largely our grantees' responsibilities to then turn around and train all of the data collectors. Um, the usual environment is that um, we train, you know, a small project team of maybe three, maximum three people probably. Um, and then those three people once they become familiar and understand how to collect data using our using the software, then um, host a, a, a local training with all of the data collectors, say there's 20 of them, and the three people that have been trained by Cadasta will, um, will, uh, will train the 20 data collectors um, on site, and then those 20 data collectors go out and um, and complete the surveys. Uh, question, can you apply as an individual? Can you apply as an individual or does it have to be under an organization? Uh, also a great question. Uh, applications are only accepted from organizations uh, that are working uh, in advancing uh, land or resource rights. Uh, so you have to be an organization, you cannot apply. Uh, as an individual. Uh, how can we verify whether we have a proper partnership agreement in place? I think I've covered this already, but um, please just reach out to your uh, current, if you're a current partner, uh, reach out to your current um, Cadasta contact and verify uh, that you do have the partnership agreement in place and that you're eligible to apply for the data accelerator grant. That's something that your uh, program specialist or your trainer should be able to, to easily answer. Uh, okay, we have a question, two questions pertaining to this grant. Uh, are you looking to collaborate with organizations or can I sign up as an individual? Okay, that was a previous question. We are only looking um, to award these grants to uh, organizations. And so please be a part of an organization that's working on this issue. And the second question, as a filmmaker working on environment and forest rights of local communities, are you also open to efforts that aim at collecting data during the project and eventually made into video, visual material that can be used as presentations? Uh, absolutely. Um, that is why one of the uh, requirements for the grant is to um, uh, work with our team uh, and specifically Madeline who spoke at the beginning of this webinar to um, to create uh, video photographs and other um, uh, story content that um, that can be used to promote your work 
our collective work and the efforts um, to document and provide evidence around land and resource rights, uh, including forests, like the example you've set. Uh, question about, um, okay, uh, the partnership agreement form uh, and that the one on the website is, is, is a lot of legal paperwork. Uh, I agree with you. I, I, I understand that, um, that pain point. Um, the, the partnership agreement on the website is meant to be a sample or an example um, of the uh, agreement that is required uh, in order to be eligible for this grant you do still have to go through the process of becoming a partner and uh, the agreement is only the final step of that process. Uh, I, I, I do understand that it's a lot of uh, legal terminology and we have, um, we have done our best to um, make sure that uh, it only contains the essential elements. Um, but un unfortunately, it is a, you know, a six page document, um, not including the attachments. Um, there's, there's not a lot that we can do uh, in order to uh, shorten that. But I do think that most of the terms and conditions are fairly standard. And um, most partners that we um, have worked with previously don't have, um, don't have issues with our standard um, items in the in the uh, partnership agreement. Uh, question about providing uh, technical support for the life of the project. Yes, absolutely. Um, once you become a Cadasta partner and are and are successful in um, in being awarded a grant, we will support you not just. Uh, with training on the front end, but yes, we will be, you will have a Cadasta staff member supporting you and available for technical assistance during the uh, life of your project or during the life of your grant. So there's a question about uh, regarding budget. Um, are computers used uh, in data collection and visualization as an allowable cost? Um, that's a great question. Uh, we definitely have um, focused or um, uh, recommended that the priority be on um, data collection tools, so those being smartphones or tablets. Um, I, you would have to, uh, if a computer was to be requested, uh, you would have to include in your justification why that, uh, why a computer is necessary um, instead of or in addition to um, tablets or mobile phones. Um, so I'm not going to say that it's not allowed, but you would have to provide a very strong uh, justification for why um, the computer is needed and and specifically related to you know monitoring uh, data collection and I note that that you have visualization in your um, in your question and while I agree that visualization is an important activity um, it is not the focus of this grant and so if the computer is used solely for that purpose it would likely not be, um, you know, sufficiently justified under this grant. Uh, the second question related to budget, do staff uh, and consultant rates have to be in a daily rate or in another format, I, uh, exa for example, monthly stipend? Um, we are agnostic as to how you um, uh, give us your uh, staffing rates, whether it's hourly, whether it's daily or monthly, you just need to explain to us uh, which uh, unit of time you are using. And, um, and uh, include that in, um, 
include that in your um, budget justification. We have a question, I joined late. Are you going to make the presentation slides available later? The answer is yes. You will have access both to the presentation slides and to a recording of this webinar. We will send that out to all participants who, um, who registered for the webinar, whether they uh, were able to participate or not. And then both the uh, webinar recording and the presentation slides will be available on our website as well. Uh, question, can a law firm representing a local community uh, asserting collective land rights as indigenous tribals people in a court case apply for a grant on behalf of the community. Cultural mapping is needed uh, to identify their land boundary and ownership. Uh, can Cadasta technology be used to do this cultural mapping or help pay someone to do this? And can the data be used to help support the court case as evidence? Uh, this is a great example of a use case. And you know, the, the short answer to this is, uh, is yes. Um, Cadasta works with other um, indigenous communities working to um, provide evidence um, of their um, claims, um, sometimes not in a court case, but we actually do have another um, use case where they're trying to create evidence for a court case. And so uh, this is very much in line with um, our existing work and something that um, would be possible under a new uh, partnership agreement. Um, if an organization com successfully completes a project, is it, allow is it allowed to apply for further uh, project funding maybe? Um, and this is coming from an existing partner. So if I understand correctly, um, you can only apply for this grant and, and successfully be awarded it one time just because you have a, um, an existing agreement with Cadasta and maybe you've already completed the work under that um, agreement, um, you can apply for um, you know, an expansion of your data collection activities um, under this grant and be awarded. Um, but you cannot receive this grant multiple times. You can only receive it once, um, but you can work with Cadasta previously on an unfunded um, project and then apply for this as a, as a funded opportunity. Uh, we have a question uh, regarding the collection and processing of visual material. Can we add budget elements to enable this? Um, I think this is, um, I have to maybe, uh, I would want more clarity on this question, but um, on the collection item, you absolutely should be using um, your, your budget to um, collect. Um, ma okay, I'm actually rereading this though. So regarding the collection and processing of visual material, can we add this budget element to enable this? I'm gonna say um, while it is required that you uh, support with visual and, um, and success story content, it is not something, I would include that in management and overhead, um, that's not an allowable cost. Um, so if it's specifically related to kind of producing visual materials or content, um, collection and processing of this should not be included um, in your grant budget or request. Uh, we have a question about, uh, can staff be paid on number of individuals contacted and updated in the tab? Um, that seems like it is um, an organizational decision and I would be, uh, we would not look favorably or unfavorably on that. You would just need to um, quantify that um, in terms of your request um, and describe that arrangement uh, for us in your budget justification. Um, so I, I don't have a pin, an opinion on that one way or another. 
but I just, uh, I would remind you to make sure that your explanation in the, um, in the budget justification is, um, addresses that. And uh, I realize we're up against time. So one last question from an anonymous attendee. Um, can you um, elaborate on any matching funds if partners deem funds provided by uh, your organization are not enough? Um, we would certainly support and welcome a grant application that comes with other um, funding opportunities. It is not a requirement. So you won't be denied or looked upon negatively if you don't have it. But if you do, I think that certainly supports um, your grant request to us. Um, and as you say, I mean, uh, $10,000 can only go so far. And so if your uh, project activities require that this effort, you know, be funded at $20,000, you can certainly request 10 from us and then, you know, the additional 10 uh, from another organization. So no, it's not required, but if you have them, that's great. And please do use your application to describe, uh, describe that uh, to us. That's all of the questions that we have. Um, thank you very much. As we mentioned before, these slides will be available um, uh, afterwards as well as the uh, recording on our website and by email. Thank you all very much for participating and for your interest in Cadasta's Data Accelerator Grants. Have a good day.